Good evening, everyone. Pastor Brent Oliver here, and um, we're going to take just a few minutes of a daily devotional uh, called 50 Days to Pentecost. 50 Days to Pentecost is a daily devotional we've been doing, talking about the Holy Spirit, as Jesus and the Word of God talked about the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was very adamant that uh, before you go out to fulfill the Great Commission, which is to make disciples of all nations, wait until you're clothed with power, he said, from on high. In other words, wait till you're filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and only then are you equipped to go. And so we've been talking about that. Um, uh, a couple days ago, we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, spoken of in Acts chapter 2, which was the initial time on this earth that the Holy Spirit was given. Uh, Jesus said, when I ascend to heaven, uh, I'll ask the Father and he will send another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, who will be with you and in you. And so 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven, uh, the Holy Spirit was sent to the earth. The Holy Spirit came to live inside you and I as believers. We're born again by the Spirit of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed. But this baptism in the Holy Spirit uh, was this clothing and this power that he wanted us to have. So today, uh, we, we, this is our third day of talking about the initial physical evidence uh, of being filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you know that you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, there are many things that would be common to someone who's filled with the Holy Spirit. But one thing is, and that is speaking in other tongues. In Acts chapter 2, it says, Holy Spirit came upon them and they all spake with other tongues. They spoke with other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Yesterday, uh, Peter, uh, a Jew, went to a Gentile's house, which he would have never done except the Spirit of God told him to. Uh, and you can read that and look at that uh, devotion we did yesterday. Um, and uh, when pre Peter was sharing the gospel with these Gentiles, uh, even as he's still preaching, in their hearts, they believe what he's saying, and the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and praise God. So by that point, Peter understood that God accepted them, therefore God accepted Gentiles, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit just like the believers on the day of Pentecost were. This is the third time in the scriptures that we look at, and day 31, speaking in tongues, Saul of Tarsus receives the Holy Spirit. So Saul is this uh, very zealous Jewish, believe, Jewish man who is against uh, people in the way or people that are following Jesus Christ. Um, uh, one day he is on his way to Damascus and there's this dramatic encounter um, that literally this bright light shines, knocks him to the ground. He's physically blinded and someone had to lead him into the city. This is found in the book of Acts chapter 9. While in the city, the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, spoke to a man by the name of Ananias. And uh, in chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, here's what it says. Here's what the Spirit of God said to Ananias. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. What's interesting is Ananias was not an apostle. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't an evangelist. Ananias was just a spirit-filled believer who could hear from God and obey. And it confirms what uh, the scripture in the gospel of Mark says when he says, all these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. Uh, etc., etc., and they place their hands on sick people and they'll get well. All of this is there. This is not just for the spiritually elite or professional clergy. This is for each and every believer. So all believers, not just apostles, prophets, evangelists, etc., will be spoken to by the Spirit of God and used by the Holy Spirit if we listen and obey. And notice this miracle here uh, of Holy Spirit speaking such specific direction. Um, there again, Ananias arrived. Um, and, and I'm just fascinated by this. The Holy Spirit told Ananias, uh, go to Judah's house on Straight Street. Ask for a, a man named Tarsus 
uh, a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he's praying, and in a vision he saw you coming and placing your hands on him to restore his sight. That is absolutely amazing. You can't just read over that. For the Holy Spirit to give such dramatic, specific, detailed direction. Can you imagine that Anna and I went to the house? Is there someone named Saul here? Yeah. Um, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said I'm supposed to come lay hands on him, pray for him to receive his sight. Uh, well, he's been blinded. There's something just happened to him. So, yeah. And it's like, whoa. But see, it's that kind of power that the Lord wanted his people to have. We know Jesus had that kind of understanding, insight, and power. And he says, this is available for you and I too. So when Ananias arrived, he simply told Saul that the Lord had sent him. And the scripture says in verse 17, placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, and I'm thinking, how do you know that? As you were coming here, he sent me, listen to what Ananias says. He sent me so that you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. So in one sense, we see the scripture says he was supposed to lay hands on him, that he receive his sight. But Ananias then also said, I'm supposed to lay hands on you so that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. So both of those things were supposed to take place. Notice the emphasis in the church that people were saved, baptized in water, and this early church was all about making sure people were also filled with the Holy Spirit. It's something that's missing a lot in our society today. In verse 18, it says, immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. I'm sure this baptism was a baptism in water. You say, well, okay, it doesn't say it was filled with the Holy Spirit, then did it? Nope, it doesn't. It says that, uh, you see, Ananias said, I'm supposed to come lay hands on you so you receive your sight. This scripture says, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and his sight was restored. So then the question is, well, if one thing happened that the Lord sent Ananias there for, did both things happen? Well, I can tell you absolutely the answer is yes. And here's how I know. First off, Paul was healed. We believe that if God did one thing, surely he would do another. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, the apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church, listen to his words. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. He wasn't boasting about a comparison thing. What he was basically saying is, I speak in other tongues. Well, how can you speak in other tongues? You can't unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So this acknowledgement that he speaks in tongues was also an acknowledgement that he had been filled with the Holy Spirit. So here's our third instance in the book of Acts, and all three say people filled with the Holy Spirit speak in other tongues. As we'll see tomorrow, Paul prayed for others to receive the Holy Spirit. Because you know what? We can't give away what we don't have. These signs will follow them that believe according to the scriptures. And this means even you. That's our devotion for tonight. I appreciate you joining us. I hope these words are inspiring to you. And uh, go back and read what the scriptures that I've given to you and study those and prove it to yourself so that you can begin to make sure that you're filled with the Holy Spirit by coming to the Lord and asking him to give you exactly what they have as well. I encourage you to do that tonight. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one that's watching. Bless them, Lord, with your spirit. May they be empowered, empowered to be your witnesses, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight, and Lord willing, we'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.